Hey kindergarten, it's Mrs. Shivani again, back with another super cool listening and learning story. So on Friday, we read a fictional story about the elves and the shoemaker. That was a really good one, huh? I gotta say, I love seeing your responses on Google Classroom. Please keep sending those in. You guys are doing incredible work. Okay, so today's story is called The House Builders, and we're going to learn about bricklayers, masons, and carpenters. But let me set the story up for you first before we read. So, the materials that these guys used were stone, like what you're seeing right now, brick, and wood. Do you have wood in your house? I know I do. I have wooden floors and they creak a lot and they're very cold in the morning and at nighttime they're usually chilly too. So the tradespeople of the colonial times were experts at using these materials and they would make houses and walls and fences out of them and they would make a house that looked something like this one. Isn't that a nice house? Do you see the wood and the stone? Do you see any bricks? Don't worry, we're gonna look at this picture again a little bit later in our story. So people who make houses now are called carpenters. You might recognize a carpenter looking like something like this. And we're going to learn about carpenters in our story today too. So your goal today is to listen carefully to learn more about the tools that the bricklayer, the mason, and the carpenter used. And at the end, your journal prompt will be to choose one of those three tradespeople, and you'll draw a picture of what they made and what material they used. So listen carefully to find out the answer to that question. So before I start reading, you can sit mountain, mermaid, um, crisscross, cozy up on your couch, get a reading buddy, lay on your belly, choose a comfy position in three, two, one. Okay, let's read. Ooh, let's see what this picture is all about. The bricklayer. In colonial American towns, most people built their own homes with the help of their neighbors. However, townspeople who were wealthy, that means they had a lot of money, could hire tradespeople who had particular expertise in building. There were three types of tradespeople who helped build houses in colonial times and who still build houses today. The bricklayer, the mason, and the carpenter. The bricklayer builds walls and houses using bricks. Bricks are made from clay, extremely fine red soil that comes from the earth. A long time ago, people discovered that if you mixed clay with a little water, shaped it into a block, and then baked it in the hot sun, it would dry out and harden into a solid brick. In this picture, you can see a bricklayer laying bricks the way it was done three hundred years ago. He's using a special tool called a trowel to spread out the mortar. Mortar is a really gooey, sticky material right here, made of sand, water, and a type of crushed rock called lime. Not like the kind of lime that you might put in your water or anything like that. It's not the fruit lime, it's a rock. Once the bricklayer had spread the mortar evenly with his trowel, he would add another brick to the wall. If the bricklayer is good at his trade, his wall will be straight and strong and it will last for many years. Ooh, a stone chimney. A stonemason, or mason for short, builds walls and houses with stones. Like the bricklayer, the mason can use mortar to stick stones together. Can you see the mortar in the spaces between the stones in the chimney? I see some right here, and right here I see a lot. While bricks are mostly the same size and shape, stones come in all shapes and sizes. 
the mason has to be careful to make sure that each piece fits together closely with the pieces next to it. Now we're gonna look at a big stone wall. We looked at this one earlier too. Can you see how the stones in this wall have been carefully fitted together like pieces in a puzzle? To be able to, to, be able to fit the stones together so well, the mason had to chip away at them with a hammer and a sharp chisel, patiently reshaping the stones so that each one would fit perfectly into its space alongside the others. In fact, these stones were fitted together so well that the mason did not need to use mortar to help keep them in place. He was very efficient. In an old colonial town, many masons were asked to build the foundations of homes. The foundation is the bottom or the base of a house, the lowest part on which the rest of the house stands. The stones in the foundation must fit together snugly so that they never move or crack. The stones on each of the corners of the house, called cornerstones, are especially important. Strong cornerstones make a strong foundation, which makes a sturdy house that won't fall down. Finally, can you tell what other material, material is used to build houses? That's right, wood. And do you know who works with wood? A carpenter. I bet you guessed it. Most carpenters begin with a diagram or a drawing of what they plan to build. The diagram tells the carpenter how long, how wide, and how thick each wooden board needs to be. And it shows how the pieces need to be fitted together. Sometimes to save money and time, instead of using smooth wooden boards, carpenters use rough logs to build houses. I've definitely seen a log house before. Now let's check out some more of their special tools. You're gonna like this one. Ooh, this is like a flat pencil. That's kind of interesting. Let's see what this thing is called. The carpenter uses a lot of special tools. This picture shows a carpenter measuring a board with a special kind of ruler called a square. Oh, this is called a square. This is good for measuring angles and straight edges. This is an angle right here. And you wanna make a nice, they wanna make a nice straight edge. The carpenter makes a mark on the board with a pencil to show him where to cut. Carpenters have to be careful to get their measurements exactly right. Otherwise, if they cut the wrong size piece of wood or cut it at the wrong angle, the pieces will not fit together correctly and the house will not stand up properly. That would be a big problem. Most good carpenters measure their boards twice before cutting just to make sure that they have marked the exact right place. That's why carpenters have a saying, measure twice, cut once. It's basically to remind themselves to double check their measurements before cutting. Hey, just like it's important when we're doing math to double check our work. We say that all the time in KA. Once they cut a board, they can't uncut it. Once the carpenter has cut the boards to the size he needs with his saw, he fastens them together with his hammer and his nails. Then he uses a tool called a level to check and make sure that everything is straight and even. Ooh. So they are very diligent in their work. They like to make sure everything is perfect. Two more pictures. When a carpenter builds a house, he builds from the ground up. He begins by building the frame of the house. All of this that you're seeing is the frame of the house. The frame gives the house its shape and it holds everything together, just like our skeletons, our bones, give our body shape. The frame holds up the walls, the roof, the doors, and the windows. If the carpenter does his job well, the end result will be a beautiful house that keeps rain and wind out for years and years. We know that many early American house builders were true experts at their trades because many of their buildings are still standing today, as straight and tall as ever. Last photo, it's this one again. Although we sometimes call them construction workers, bricklayers, masons and carpenters still work together to build today's homes. 
Like colonial homes, modern homes can have parts that are built out of brick, stone, and wood. But unlike colonial tradespeople, the tradespeople of today use electric power tools to make their work much easier to accomplish. The end. That's the end of our story. But I have a few questions for you guys as always. And these questions are so important to see what you remembered from the book. It's called comprehension. And comprehending what you read is really, really important. So let's see. Which tradesperson builds using bricks? Bricklayer, I bet, I bet you guessed it. And which trade person builds houses or walls using stones? Think, 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 stone. Did you guess Mason? You're right. And which tree person builds objects using wood? Carpenter. I bet you got all three of those right. Okay, so here is your goal that I said in the beginning. I attached a journal prompt for you on Google Classroom, but you can also use any piece of paper that you have in your house. And I want you to choose one of those tradespeople. So you choose a bricklayer, a mason, or a carpenter, and draw and label a picture of what they built, a house, and what they used to build the house, what material they used. Got it? I can't wait to see your Google Classroom responses, and you can also send me a message on Class Dojo too if you don't have Google Classroom. Thank you guys so much for listening to this story. On Tuesday, tomorrow, we will be back, and you're gonna like this one. We're gonna learn all about the blacksmith, and it's kind of a dangerous job. So make sure you come back to check that out tomorrow. I will see you guys then. Can't wait to read you that story. Bye, have a great day.